So I started with book 11 with a really good idea to make a character story where the main character is essentially the reason why everybody else in the story changes. What I realized though about halfway through writing it is that the main character needed a character arc as well. I added one in about halfway through but unfortunately the first half of the book is a little bit wonky because there is no character development, there is no want or need, and this typical three-act story that so many people are so used to wasn't there, not even a little bit, but not even a tiny bit. My main character was an amazing character. I enjoyed writing her. The problem was there was no oomph to her, and while she was the reason why everybody else wanted to do better in the story and she was the reason why everybody wanted to become better people she had no particular push herself which was unfortunate because amazing character love her dearly and I wanted to show her how amazing she was which really didn't come through as much as I wanted as I wrote it and I look back on it and I've read it one of the things that I love about the book is how those characters around her see her as a good person, not a Mary Sue. She has definitely her flaws. Uh, and they look at her as someone they want to aspire to be. They've uh, known her through uh, historical mythology and they want to be more like her. They want to aspire to be like her and therefore they want to push her to where she needs to be and they want to help her in that quest. The side characters were, I think, handled really well. Their dialogue back and forth worked very well. Uh, the good thing about the story is it really was a good fun part. I actually started planning this book on a road trip from where I live in Georgia to Colorado uh, with some family. We're going to do some Spartan races. We're going to go just explore Colorado for um, about seven days, um, which included the driving. So it was about only three and a half, four days real because we, we drove, it took a long time to drive there. The book was a lot of fun because I had the idea, hey, I want to write these. And when it wasn't my turn to, turn to drive, I thought, well, what am I going to do? I can't really, there's no real internet in the middle of nowhere um, with all the farms and the wind farms and everything else around you. There's just not that much um, Wi-Fi data, any of that out there, not many cell phone towers. So you don't get that much in, in ability to, to look up on the internet, play games, watch videos. I said, well, I, I can plan some books on my phone. I can just start putting in some ideas and working through on the little notepad thing, and start saving it, what I want the book to be about, the main characters, the essential character arc, what each character learned, yada, yada, yada. And so I did that, which was really awesome. It was a good plan. I stuck, so many of my books previously, I had tried to do the typical hero's journey, the typical, you know, A, B, C, you know, all that stuff that everybody knows a million times, has seen a million videos about it. Um, I may do one in the future. Everybody knows that story. I didn't try to do that with this book at all. Instead, I had it as each individual, there was a plot, A to B, there was definitely, she wanted to do a certain thing, but again, I wish I would have made it little bit more pronounced, a little bit more something, whereas the back characters had their character arcs and they kind of had a, a arc array, almost like, you know, Angry Birds, where, you know, one hit and then another hit and then another hit as you go through, which was a neat idea and I like it and I still like it and I think rewriting that book would make it really well done, make it really uh, interesting, make it a lot of fun. The world building, and this is a continuation of um, book what, seven? I have it here on my phone. Pardon the chair noise. Book seven, eight. Yep, book seven and eight are the previous books to this one. And I had put 
the ideas in that book in the in my background as I had written those previously and here's kind of what I think is the world building for it and I just shoved that world building straight in there whereas the previous book to this one book 10 didn't really have that much in 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 world building it was more of a kind of uh, battle intrigue more story whereas this one just goes straight world building as they're discovering uh, the characters in, in, in the book don't really understand what's going on at all. They don't really understand what the reasons for all this is as they're discovering it. Whereas modern readers, if they figure out what I'm meaning by each individual thing that I'm writing about, each individual thing that's going on, they'll go, aha, that's what this means, that makes sense, this is this. And so you'll see the tropes of what I'm writing. You'll see the uh, cliches that are seen from a completely new lens you'll see that and you'll understand that and know, know how that works. The ending, I think I pulled out pretty decent. The beginning, I think, worked out very well. There's a part, there's always in the middles, there's, those are always my weak points. Um, really making the conflict deep, middles, and having a good character arc are really the things that, that I don't hook well with. I didn't in subsequent books, but not this one so much, but getting away from the standard, you know, you're in a place, you, the mentor comes, you refuse adventure, you get forced into adventure, you cross the threshold, all that heroic journey stuff, I think getting away from that was a good first step to really start developing and branching out more into writing. I keep trying to this is the amusing part about when I write. I write, oh, I'm gonna write this just as a writing exercise to do something different, and then it kind of blooms, blossoms out into something in its own world. Um, every book I've written started with that idea, and then it just kept going and, and going. It's like the Energizer Bunny, which is fun and interesting, and, and you just d really discover a lot of worlds and universes that way, which is why authors who write one book and then are just done with it, I don't, I don't really understand them in some ways, and I don't mean this is a diss, or I'm better than you, or I'm whatever. I just really, my mind works in that such a way where so I'm actually writing a book, I'm thinking about the side characters that I could write book about, background characters I could write book or books about, world building I could write books about, uh, things that happened in the past I could write books about. And so I developed this, you know, even if it's just, no, this is just going to be a one-time thing, it still just boosh, 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 and, and starts developing its own mini universe, its own stories, and really branches out. So authors that say write the one book in the one universe and the one story, and then they're done with that, I think in part one of the reasons for that is they're looking at this as a concrete story, especially for high concept, high concept being where you take X and Y, you mesh it together, you have the thing. So you take, I mean literally titles of Muppet movies, you know, Muppets, the Great Caper, Muppets in space, you put those together, boom, you have essentially what your movie is. It's not hard to, to push those together and figure out what you're looking at. And so a lot of authors will take, what if I told Macbeth in hell? Which sounds pretty neat, and that sounds, you know, I mean, somebody could write a book on that and it'd probably be very popular. Um, write, you know, Othello in space. And you take those ideas, you put them there, and I can see why people would then take that, they'd write the story because in their mind and their conceptualization, that's all that story is. It has a defined beginning, defined end, and I'm not just talking about the story, but also the universe itself. There's just book, book, it's bookmarked, and it's done. Whereas when I'm writing, I'm doing a lot of conceptualization, not only of this alternate universe I'm looking at, but I'm looking at it not through a lens of I'm telling a concrete bookended story and then I'm done with the universe altogether. I think, well, why did this begin? And while those authors may go into that to an extent and they may you know, hint at some things or, or have some notes about it, I, my brain just keeps going and part of it is you know, having the you know, the, um, oh, what is that, how to ADHD has said it, uh, executive dysfunction, 
disorder or something like that, I think is what, what she calls it every now and again. Some other folks have called it. I wouldn't necessarily characterize it as that. The issue is just, I have this constant unrelenting, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, what about this? And what about that? And I go through these cycles and just, it really is like if you can think of a universe, you have the universe and just splinters off and splinters off and it kind of grows and there's just no stopping it because it just continues to grow. That's what ends up happening with a lot of my stories. So you take, what was it, seven? Eight. And and it just grew because really that was seven was going to be its own book, its own thing. I was going to write it, be done with it, edit it a couple times, and just start throwing it out to people. And then as I thought about the past, I thought about the future, I thought about everything involved with the book. I wanted to write the stories of other people, and I think one of the books that I wrote after this book, uh, thirteen, I think, really is one of my better books. Book thirteen. Um, not not really 14, even though I love 14. Uh, book 13 is probably my best book so far. Um, and this is where I think in book 10, 11, 12, and 13, I make a marked improvement in my writing ability, a marked improvement in my writing skill, and my ability to write as I go with ideas that actually make sense with the story and continue the story with decent conflict, with decent... Um, throughput of the story, storylines that make sense, a little bit more um, tension, dread, those things, rather than flinching from it all the time. If I say, oh, this would be a terrible thing to happen, but as I'm writing, hey, let's make that terrible thing happen as a disaster to make the conflict go forward, make the character motivation change, and really go forward with it rather than everything ends up being a happy ending and there's no real tension um, or conflict. So book 11, 11 being my favorite number, really enjoyed it and it wasn't at all on purpose, just happened to be that way as I actually had to sit down and figure out which book was which. Really good stuff, I enjoyed writing it. Um, all my books deserve a rewrite, well okay not books one through three, one, two, and three definitely don't. But pretty much everything after that, in some way, shape, or form, um, even if I completely take it out. Uh, for instance, one of my current writing projects is book two, where I, I do a whole new introduction. I rip out everything that had been in that book and just completely get rid of it. But I take a lot of the scenes in that book and, and actually I'm adding those in. So don't throw away, at some point I'm going to do a whole, these are all the things I've learned. And one of those things is don't throw away stuff, keep it. Even if it's terrible, keep it, put it somewhere because you never know when, ooh, you know what, I could use that scene, I could use that line, I could use that character, I could use that setting, and you can just recycle it. And some of the good things that you did, distill something that's terrible down to a couple good things, and then you got some awesome. That's book 11. Thank you for watching and listening. Hope you're doing well. Have a wonderful day.